this is one of those cases where things happen. Um, I don't know if we're going to continue to use LiftMaster for these arms. Uh, I think that there's some better brands, but um, we've got some of these installed elsewhere. And I'll take this apart and show you what happened inside this arm. Uh, but the some of the nut came off and it basically locked up this arm, so we can't pull this rod in and out even when we disconnect the. Yeah, do this, and you should be able to pull this arm out, and I can't move it at all. So the gate won't move. It's got broken parts, so we're going to replace that. And this stuff happens. This is kind of how our this is like our basic setup if we need to do a solar. This would be the minimum that I would want to do. And I remember when we showed up on site here to do this operator, the guy, I mean, they, they'd already paid the money and stuff like that. And I think he was kind of spray, maybe one of those people was a little bit surprised by the cost, but um, quickly realized when we came out here and basically tore up his entire driveway and he's like, well, you guys had conduits running everywhere. And I'm like, that's what you have to do when you want to get installation. So we've got conduits running into the keypad. We try not to use wireless keypads because they can be problematic. We've got a latch on that, and we'll show you that here in a second. Um, we did not use just the single battery and the single panel. We've got more, uh, I think we've got 30 watts of charging power, and then we've got two of the 33 amp hour batteries instead of two seven amp hour. So we have a lot of storage, so that when we get that week of nothing but clouds, the gate will still continue to operate. Um, big, big differences. The other thing we have is we have loop detectors so we've got shadow uh let's see we have shadow right here interrupt and then free exit so the free exit loop is down there uh, a little ways back behind us and then the shadow loops right underneath the gate the swing path of the gate and then the free or the interrupt loops on the outside you don't see all that stuff in something like a ghost controls or gto or mighty mule or one of those other box stores uh, the other thing you're not going to see is you're not going to see any safety devices. So there's nothing. Most of the people will install these gates without any loops whatsoever. So it won't stop the gate from closing on a car, let alone a person. And that's problematic because that does not meet UL325 requirements. Um, and when they get those cloudy weeks, they'll just stop working because they don't have the battery battery capacity. So we try and think of all those things for the customers so that they don't have to worry about those because what we're looking for is good reliability. We don't want them to call us up the first time it is overcast for three days saying my gate won't open. We'll show you here over in a little bit how this latch works when we get this thing hooked up. But right now we'll just change out this arm real quick and get it up and running. This is what we have. So this is supposed to run on that worm gear right there, and it came right off the end of it. This is not supposed to be unthreaded like that. And when that thing unthreaded, it broke this off, and so this thing was just laying down in here, and now this whole arm's all jacked up and no worky-worky. I haven't seen that before. I'm not sure why that came off, but that's a problem. These arms are not my favorite. Uh, I would much prefer to put a pedestal mount operator in, and that's one that sits on a pedestal or a piece of concrete outside the gate and has a big arm that kind of pivots. Those are my favorite. They're a lot tougher. Uh, these are probably on the lower end of the spectrum. They're a little cheaper and stuff like that, but there's some things they don't do. And then kind of in the same family of operators, these uh, is some hydraulic ones. Now, if you get the hydraulic ones, they're not comparable to these really at all in cost. They're quite a bit more expensive. Um, we've got a bunch of those up in Jackson when people just have to have swing gates. Uh, we really try and discourage swing gates in Wyoming just because snow build up and things like that. But these are still, um, they can be very reliable, but they still are more of a budget operator. I think we'll get away from these altogether, but they're, they're good for a, certain applications. Um, but LiftMaster may not be the brand we go to for future stuff because we've kind of had a lot of warranty issues here lately and that costs us money. And that's something we always consider. When something starts costing us a bunch of money and they don't pay us the labor to fix it, then we have to think about whether or not we want to keep using that. See, this is what's supposed to happen. That's locked, but when I unlock it, I should be able to freely pull this. That was not the case with the last one. So that's how you are able to open and close the gate if there's a 
if your installer didn't give you enough battery power or you have another problem. This is another thing that I would say sets us apart is rather than wadding all this up inside the cabinet, we'll go ahead and trim that to the right length so that there's not a big rat's nest in there. I'm gonna show you something that will blow your mind. Are you ready? You ready for this? These wires, you can cut them. I'll show you why that's important. This is something else that's gonna blow your mind. Right here. But you can actually, you can take a hole socket made for conduit and you can actually put holes in these wherever you want. So you can actually terminate your conduit. I know that blows your mind. Most people like to just cut their conduit off down here and then just open air their wires up into the cabinet through some big old butchered hole so that they can get all cut up. But yeah, they actually make these bits that you can cut holes in metal with. That's something you don't see a lot. So properly terminated conduit for unfortunately far too many gate operator installers is not something that you see. It drives me nuts. That's another thing. Put that on a list of things that drives me nuts. I mean, right up there with people that don't bother to get their license before they do this. Which in Wyoming, you're supposed to have a low voltage license, but a lot of people don't. And then they come in here and they butcher an install. But let's talk about that. So this cabinet here that I cut all these fancy holes in, that cabinet, that's not something that you would see anywhere else. You have to go buy this cabinet special. This is what you're gonna get with the operator package. This is all SWI stuff so that we can put these big batteries in here. And we have an even bigger one. So if you really need a lot of battery power, we've got a setup that's even bigger than this one. You could run your gate for like a month without having to charge it. We've got a couple of those running around. But those solar setups, just to even buy the product is like $3,000. So when you think you're gonna get an operator installed for 2,000, sometimes the solar setup can cost you more than that when you're doing things correctly. Look at that. I mean, I don't have my fancy ends anymore, but you can cut those off. We can make do without them. Because what we don't wanna have happen is have a big rat's nest. I like to have everything all nicely tied off and routed neatly. These are our loops over here. Just one of the things that really, I think that the little finishing touches like that, I think make all the difference in the world. I hope I can remember where all these wires went. Oh wait, it's color coded. We actually, Took our Evo out here and drove all these posts. Not a, there's not a single concreted post on this project. These are something you might not have seen before. Those are basically a wire nut. They're called a Wago, W-A-G-O. And they are super nice. Big fan of the Wago. Big, big fan of the Wago. You can get them in two, three, and five. They work very, very well. And the reason they work well is because in our line of work, we have some wires that are very, very small, some wires that are very big, and trying to sometimes get those connected can be a challenge, but those will accept anything. I don't remember what sizes they accept. They're a lever nut, basically. I got one in my pocket, actually. Yes, right here. So just pop that lever up, and they're pretty stiff, and it opens up a slot in there, and then when you flip that, down, it kind of snaps in place and pinches the wire. Don't get your fingers, and you will eventually get your finger in the way of that thing. It kind of smarts. I like these screwdrivers too. This is a kit I got from DeWalt. Um, they're insulated, which is nice when you're working inside of boards and stuff. I don't have the handle on this one. You can exchange the handles. It, it comes with two different handles, but I can use them without the handle, and then you can pop the handle on them like that and interchange them. Oh, why did you... Hang on. Hang on. I went colorblind there for a second. That is green. It needs to go in the green, not the brown. That was almost... That could have been catastrophic. So when you do these solar operators, you've got to cut into this. Typically, you would have power coming in right here to charge the batteries, which are right here. But instead, we have solar panels coming in there. 
Okay. Yep. Calm down. So anytime you put a new board in or anything, uh, we we'll have to relearn the limits. I will talk about one thing. So initially when we drove this post, we thought, oh, we're going to be in there like four and a half feet. It's not a big deal. And we didn't realize how much torque was on that post. And so it ended up wanting to spin it, even though it was four and a half feet in the ground. So we ended up driving some, driving some pipes crossways and welding them. So that post is like really in there. Plus it has some anchors driven at an angle and then welded to the bottom of it to keep it from spinning. If we do one of these in the future, what we'll do is we'll do like you have on a T-post for a farm fence and we'll weld some flanges on there deep down inside and then drive it and then it won't let it spin. So if you do that and you want to drive the post, be thinking about uh, the fact that you've got all that torque because, well, I wasn't thinking about that at all. A couple other things. Even though this is, they just wanted a simple gate, they didn't want something really expensive and fancy. Um, even though they did that, we went ahead and put these hinges on here because one of the biggest failure points and one of the things that'll cause the most problems for gates is if there's a lot of resistance in that hinge so we didn't want a friction hinge which is basically what you get when you buy these gates we cut all that stuff off there and then welded these block hinges on which are um, they don't take any grease and we'll stay really so if we wanted to swing this gate right now we could swing it very very easily so anytime we do a swing gate with an operator we always put really really good hinges on the best ones we can find um, we do have our sign here this gate could cause serious injury or death. And then this is the, uh, we went ahead and put uh, an extra conduit over here when we were running all of our conduit. So this is for if we ever wanted to put a wired eye. I'm not a huge fan of reflective photo eyes, but it came with one. So we're just trying it out on this operator to see. But we put this gate lock on here. So even when the power's off, you can't force that gate. It does have a key override, which the owner has. Um, so no matter how hard you try, you can't force that gate open. We didn't just weld straight to the tube. We put that channel on there. That's about it. Uh, they're thinking about putting like an archway over here, maybe something a little more decorative. They didn't, weren't sure what they wanted to do right here. So we've kind of left this open right now. Uh, and then this is the reflective photo eye. So we're going to see how this holds up over time. And then we've just got a reflector down there. Normally what we use is a through beam which means it's just like your garage door. It's got a beam on both sides and they talk to each other. They see each other. Uh, but we'll try the reflective on this and then see what we think. So we got it closed, it latched. We heard it latch and we're good. I like to walk all over my tools like this because it's just not quite as nice if you don't pick up a handful of mud and stuff. When you... So that's what I like to do. I like to throw my stuff on the ground and then get dirty hands. It makes it look like I did something. See, look at that. That's work right there. Did some work. I will have all those haters know, no flip-flops. So all you haters, I don't wanna hear it. No flip-flops today, just for you. Then what I like to do with all this garbage is basically I just pick it up and then just freaking chuck it. Because why would you wanna leave the job site neat and tidy? I mean, really. So. I'll show that off. We won't put that on camera because I can't let the owner, in case the owner ever watches this video, I would never want them to know I did that. But just know that's what I do with all my garbage. I keep it all picked up like this so that I can just wing it. So I put it in a bucket because. So I carry a bucket in my truck just for garbage, just for little scraps. That's thinking. All right, so pretty tidy. A lot of times I like to leave the manual in the operator just in case I ever come back, but a lot of owners like to take them out. So I really like to lock cabinets too because I really don't like owners messing with stuff. They'll get in there and start tinkering, but it is kind of handy if they can help you troubleshoot it, especially as many gates as we have are far, far away. It's another thing I like to do. Uh, anytime we can, we like to keep cabinets up off the ground. We don't like them too low because of all the water and everything. But additionally, what we have is we have mice issues. So we like to keep... It's a nice thing about these cabinets is not only do I have room for all the control board stuff and the two batteries, it's all sealed up. So this is a NEMA 4 cabinet. Weather tight cabinet. So approved for outdoor use. And it keeps all the mice and critters and stuff out of it. So That's another reason to use conduit wherever you can. Now, not everything can we use conduit with. Um, we do have places like uh, this where we need to go through, but we've still got our we've still got our strain relief here and 
or cord grip, whatever you want to call these things. Because sometimes we have stuff like this, there's just nothing. I can't put a conduit on here because I don't have a termination for that. So um, we're forced to, same thing on this. I've got some, some goofy things there. And then I've got the solar panel where you can't put conduits in there. So some things we are forced to do open air, um, but wherever we can, we try and put things in conduit. That's not something you're gonna see with people who don't know what they're doing. I can tell you that. You're gonna see crap just buried in the ground. Hey, this is another thing. You see this sticker right here? It says antenna, do not straighten. You know how many times I'll go to a job site and find that the owner thought that they could get a little better reception if they just straighten that thing out? If you see an antenna like this, that's the way it came, leave it like that. That's a tip, no charge.